Issue 111 After Sonic gets hit and knocked down by Metal Knuckles and thinks over how he's not sure if he can win, Tails gets the door of the arena opened, saying that they don't have time for this, and Sonic says, And what makes you think I need your help, Pixel Brain? I was doing just fine by myself. No, you weren't. At least his dickheadery is fascinating, all the different ways that he does it. He says he's feeling okay now when he's holding his head. And Tails, who's wearing a cloak as Metal Knuckles is going up to Sonic, says that he can barely stand. He says he has a better idea and presses a button to close the door, preventing Metal Knuckles from following them. It's nice to see Tails being the smart and useful one for once in this comic. Then Sonic is surprised to learn that Tails had taken out Sentinel with his own electrified weapon off-screen while Metal Knuckles lies crushed in front of them. I wish we got to see him beating that guard. Sonic insists that he would have beaten Metal Knuckles even without Tails' help, having a bruised pride. And for some reason, Tails just says that he's the hero and everyone knows it, meekly enabling him like a yes man instead of rolling his eyes condescendingly, at the very least, like I would have been able to relate to. Sonic attacks the robot going after him, who's saying that he doesn't understand and has to stop, and this leads to the robot being destroyed and leaving a fish behind. So the Draconians are sort of like natural badniks, because their bodies are robotic. Oh, never mind! That would have been too interesting! Instead, they had constructed their robot bodies to help them live on dry land. So, so basically, while they are badniks, which is really interesting, they have to badnikify themselves on purpose to keep themselves alive. But, but it would have been much more interesting if they had that metal exterior naturally, instead of having to be fish who put themselves in robot bodies which is closer to normal badness. After Eggman and some robots threaten the heroes, they're told to stop because Sonic won his trial by combat. Aw, and I thought he'd be accused of cheating from interference by Tails. So not only does his trial system make no sense, but it doesn't even have a cheating clause. It doesn't even follow its own crazy rules. Eggman naturally says that he was helped and demands a retrial, and it's reminded of who's in charge over him. Sonic is told that the prosecutor will see him safely back to Mobius, as I feel like this feels way too easy. And Sonic tells them that as long as they're supporting Eggman, they're his enemy. And he says they haven't seen the last of him. Why would you threaten people who just put you on trial? He's lucky they can arrest him again for that. And I guess he doesn't see the point in explaining to them why he thinks Eggman's evil, because Eggman's lied to them a bunch anyways. So they wouldn't believe him. In the next story, we learn that a cleanup operation is working to rid the coastline of chemical plant zones pollution. It's nice to see the realistic effects of the levels from the Sonic games in the surrounding areas in their own area. It still doesn't feel as believable of a world as Archie Sonic since it's just ripping off settings from the games anyways, but at least it's trying with the world building, sorta. Sorta. We see that a new holiday resort is attracting visitors to the beach, and they go into the sea wearing protective suits that shield them from traces of remaining toxic gunk. That still shouldn't be enough of an enticer. Tails is patrolling the skies over the resort to protect it from any badnik attacks from Flicky's Island. And we see a civilian kid saying that Tails is their hero. Tails, that's a nice change of pace. And after a lifeguard dismisses him as a wimp, another civilian acknowledges that Tails has beaten lots of badniks before. By the way, these are humans. There have been plenty of humans in this comic, some of which have purple skin. So, which I guess is better than, than being too realistic looking? I guess the only reason Sonic calls humans weird alien creatures is because these are recent immigrants? No, that still makes no sense. After the lifeguard tries to do a bunch of push-ups with one finger, we hilariously cut to Tails giving him first aid, and the lifeguard nervously lies that he hurt his finger by wrestling with the shark. That's a nice reality in Sue's moment. Eggman then compliments Grimer on his idea to send Caterkillers to burrow under the sea and attack from below when Tails is expecting an attack from the sky. But he'll still be on the beach, so he'll still be able to respond to the attack right away anyways. After Grimer briefly hugs Eggman creepily, saying that he's his inspiration, that's never mentioned again, and the Caterkillers show up on the beach. Tails lampshades that he should have expected a sneak attack, and he defeats the Badnik with his tails and defeats the last pair of them by luring them both into his tails when they're below him, and using his intelligence. 
Eggman then can't send more than three badniks down the tunnel because it sprays green goop out of it. Probably the toxins from chemical plant zone that really should be causing health problems to Eggman by spraying him. Why didn't they just send all of the caterpillars through the tunnel to begin with? Eggman can always build more. Only three? Really? They really underestimated Tails. Oh good, they explain it. Tails had the smart idea to get rid of the toxic gunk Eggman left here by sending it down to the tunnel that Eggman was using. The story ends with the lifeguard saying that he's an okay dude. In the next story, we start out with Amy lamenting that she and Techno haven't seen Johnny in ages, and it's fortunately explained as him visiting relatives in Emerald Hill. And he's been gone for weeks because, as a rabbit, he has lots of relatives. So apparently that's a rabbit mobian trait. With, with Amy wearing a new shirt with a star on it, which is one of the things I can compliment about this comic as they bother to bury Amy's wardrobe, Techno says that she made a machine to track down short views in her workshop, and there's a brief moment I chuckled at where Johnny mistakes a widescreen TV for a new device. She explains that she can key in the frequencies of the circuits in Shortview's armor to locate him. And Amy says that it's like tuning into a new TV channel. I guess because you press numbers on a remote control? That's a pretty weak analogy. A holographic image of Shortview shows up and also conveniently shows them something stuck on his armor, and the machine starts sparking with power and transports them to the other dimension where Shortview was fighting alien robots in. Johnny cuts the power to save himself from the portal and complains about missing out on the adventures. He should consider himself lucky. Amy and Techno get threatened by aliens and run away from them, with one of them saying that the Destroyer will take care of them anyways. And the story ends with Shortfuse being revealed to be the Destroyer, who says he likes being a bad guy now. Obviously, he's been reprogrammed, because that was way too easy, even with the short temper and violent streak. And again, I find it hard to believe that someone would call themselves a bad guy unironically. That's such a fiction-y title. In the first story, by Nigel Kitching, Tails saves Sonic from Metal Knuckles by defeating a guard with his own electrified staff and crushing Metal Knuckles with a door, half of which happens off-screen. And Sonic acts totally ungrateful, saying that he didn't need his help, with Tails not even acting annoyed with him for it. You know, you could have at least had a thought bubble from Tails complaining about it. And the story ends with Sonic being allowed to go home because he's considered to have won his trial by the Dracon Empire, even though he had help. Are there no rules against cheating? Did they never anticipate that anyone could cheat? The second and third stories are by Lou Stringer. The second one has Tails fight Badnik sent to attack a beach resort from the ground, and then he sends the toxic gunk into Eggman's tunnel to check up guns from the start of the story, where it was explained that people dive into it with special suits for fun for some reason. It's nice to see Tails being clever and competent without being an arrogant dick. But again, it's another time where something Tails does to the villains doesn't kill them somehow. Because Eggman really should have died from this chemical gunk. And the third story, after explaining Johnny's absence as him visiting lots of relatives, which I'm sure was just a random ask at the last minute, the third story has Techno and Amy get warped to the alien world that Shortfuse was helping, only for Shortfuse to attack them from being reprogrammed to be a bad guy. This is a common theme. If he's working for the aliens, why would they happily decide to make their side look bad by making sure he'd call himself one of the bad guys? Like, I guess he's saying that because he knows he would be considered a bad guy from their perspective? Shortfuse makes sense as a villain too because he's short-tempered and violent and almost let Johnny die and is completely obsessed with just tormenting Robotnik instead of taking him down. Also, it sure is coincidental that Techno's parents named her that when she was a baby without knowing that she'd become a computer genius. Is that just a nickname she goes by or were her parents psychics? That name would make more sense for an AI like Nicole. That's why when I heard about Techno before reading the comic, I had always assumed that she was an AI like Nicole, who just looked organic. But I guess that would have been too interesting.